and welcome back. If you're new to my channel, I'm Deirdre and today is day one of 12 days of the night before Christmas. I know, it's so corny, I know, but if you can't do corny at Christmas, when can you do it? And today, for day one, I'm going to be baking some saffron buns in honour of all of my lovely Swedish friends and this is the bun that is baked on St Lucia's Day today in Sweden it's a festival of light and the beautiful little girls wear their little crowns of burning candles no we're not going to even think about the scary bits about that and it's it's delightful it's a lovely lovely celebration to start the 12 days before Christmas so this is not the technical 12 days at Christmas of course that starts Christmas Day and runs through to the Epiphany on the 6th so no this one is the my version of 12 days of Christmas or night of Christmas <laughs> okay so I'm not a professional baker you'll have to forgive me it's about 33 degrees Celsius here and I didn't want to chill the house down before I baked because I want the bread to be able to rise well so um, for the next hour or two here I'm going to be very warm anyway let me take you to my non-professional seen it done once and I've got a recipe of Paul Hollywood on BBC so this is my version of his version of saffron buns here we are on the first day where I'm going to try something I've never done on my own before I've seen friends do it and I've sort of helped out but I haven't done it on my own so be kind okay so what I have here is um, 250 ml of slightly warmed whole milk and over here I have about a teaspoon because that's all I had left of saffron and I'm going to add the saffron to the milk which is absolutely beautiful and I can get it all out okay I'm just going to get something to get this out with When in doubt, <clears throat> resort to a chopstick. Oops, tiny little bit left in there, and with saffron, don't waste it. So, I didn't finish till it was empty. Okay, cute little bottle though. So, now I have the saffron in here, and you can already see the colour is starting to come out. And I'll just give it a whiz with this. Here we go. Start dissolving that colour, that beautiful, and it has already that sort of slightly, oh I don't know, the saffron, this, this wonderful smell of saffron. Okay, now here I have 50 grams of butter and it's room temperature soft. So what I'm just going to do is just squish it into there. My hands, of course, because my hands are well scrubbed and these are the best tools that any baker has at any time ever now the next step is to get 500 grams of strong flour and I'm going to do it here there we are it's on zero so now I can do my 500 grams into here add seven grams of yeast so I'm just watching here we are and put that away then I have to add one teaspoon of salt and I've sort of put the yeast on one side and I'll put the salt on another put the salt over there and now I'm going to add 50 grams of caster sugar so I'm just watching once again to get it up to 50. Oh, here we go. 54. Take a pinch out. Yes, that's it. That'll be fine. Tiny bit sweeter than it should be. It's 53. Now, to this, I'm going to add this beautiful that away 
Now, because it's me, I'm going to add, put it in my mixer bowl and I'm going to use my dough hook to do this. So I'm tossing that in there and I'm going to add this beautiful, gorgeous mix in here. And then the final element is a soft cheese, 100 grams of a very soft cheese. Bring that back to zero. So to this, I'm going to add 100, hang on, zero please. Give me zero. Thank you. So I'm going to put in 100 grams of a soft ricotta. Now it's a matter of mixing it. And I'm going to use the mixer and a dough hook. Since the other side of my kitchen, I have got my mixer, big mixer, the big KitchenAid, and the dough hook on to do the work. Now, can I do this one-handed? Probably not. Just a minute. I'll leave you there with that. We'll just watch this go down. Here we go. You can see it's already starting to fall beautifully. So this dough has just, I've just turned it off and it's pretty well done, I think. It's very nice and stretchy. So it's slightly clinging to that hook but peels away beautifully. Oh, it's soft and stretchy. Mmm, it's had a, I think that's probably enough. It's had a while. Um, let's let me have a look at it. What you can see is how stretchy and soft it is. See how it's hanging together? That's showing you that the gluten has been activated and it's holding together in these strands. It's doing quite well at this point. You can see I've got strands, I've left the strands of saffron in it. I did not strain it, remember? I rather like the idea of the saffron being in it. Beautiful little hints of intense flavor and color. Right, over to a greased bowl. And here it is, ready to go in to the bowl for proving. So I'm going to use a glass bowl just so that we, later we can see how beautifully it'll have risen. So I've just, I could actually just form it into a little ball here, a nice smooth little ball, tuck all its little ends under so it looks even prettier. And it's a wonderful chance to play with it. Children aren't the only ones who love playing with dough. Play-Doh, we get the real deal. A little fat loaf of a pop it in there one of the few times I use something like a cling wrap and uh, I'll cover it with that and today it's nicely warm here in Melbourne so I suspect I'm not going to have to worry too much about getting enough heat on onto it to rise I'll just pop it in a warm place which is sort of everywhere okay there we are nice little fat baby waiting to turn into a beautiful risen dough. Now just to let you know what it should look like, you see, you can see that this is already starting to get a little dome on it because of the carbon dioxide given off by the yeast working. I think it's CO2. Yes it is. Uh, given off by the yeast starting to work. See that's turning into a little drum. And this is only after a few minutes. It's probably been maybe 10 minutes into the hour. I've set it for an hour because it's quite warm, my, my timer. Normally you, you rise it, um, let it rest to rise for about an hour to an hour and a half. It is quite warm, so it may double in size even before then. And here it is, beautifully risen. 
You can see that beautiful dome that shows that it's been working hard. I'll just take this off and you can see that it's more, it's more than doubled in size. Oh, and it just feels beautiful. And that colour in the saffron, oh, it's amazing. Yum. So now I've just got to shape the buns and then let them prove. Oh, it's such a soft, beautiful, beautiful dough. Let's hope it's going to work, shall we? Okay, time to take this out of the bowl. Oh, just lovely. Yum. Okay, I'm just going to put a bit of flour on the board. Turn it out. And hear that nice sort of hollow sound that it gets. And after a very short interlude to change the battery, I'm now going to roll this out. Be oh gosh, it's beautiful to handle. It's such a lovely, soft, pliable dough. Yum. I think perhaps I needed, the only thing I'd say is that I needed to dissolve the saffron in the milk a little more. Maybe the milk needed to be a little warmer. Is coming to visit. No, he wouldn't miss this in Christmas times. Oh, oh and the sun said it is just get better on a blanket with the skyline painted in blue. Ooh, yeah, that's what we do. We'll be chilling and having a good, good time. Now this process is like seeing a child playing with um, Play-Doh or Plasticine when we were little. I was little, it was Plasticine. So some shapes, I think the first one is the, um, it's called the boar. It's meant to look like a piggy. I have no idea really why they're called this, but that's sort of an S shaped one. And, we'll do, and the next one I think looks like a ram, but I think it's called an ox. But I think that's more sort of ram like myself, but there we go. It's just cause I grew up on a sheep farm. So that one definitely looks like a, That one definitely looks like a ram to me. And the next one you divide in half. Okay, so you've got now two little sausages. The next one, and you do that little S again. Like that. And, whoops, like this. Maybe I roll it a little bit more. So you've got two. Like that, and then you put them together sort of squish them in the middle to make a little cross with curly edges. Pass, don't know what that one's meant to be. <laughs> it looks a bit funny anyway, so I wouldn't worry about it. I think my favourite one is the um, is the ox, which looks like a ram. Now these will rise quite a bit, so I need to keep them quite well apart. I think I'll only do six on the tray. Do another tray of them. Not want them all squishing together. Oops. They do have to rise again, of course, you remember. Do that. All of these nice curly sheep, oxes, whatever. Nice and straight. And take these little rounds. Well, 
well they look a bit odd but they now have to rise again before I glaze them and pop them in the oven. And here we go, very lightly covered them with plastic wrap just to keep the, them from drying while they do a second prove. Now I've got another tray over this side, sitting here. That's the one I just did so that's not quite as fat yet. So we'll see how they prove their odd shapes, aren't they? I know, I'm not very good at making the shapes apparently. This one just looks like a figure eight. Oh dear, I might have to fix that one. Well, these may be some of the strangest uh, shaped saffron buns ever made, but um, I obviously have a bit of work to do in the shaping department. Right now, I'm just going to give the tops a very, very light glaze with uh, one, just a beaten egg yolk, and I'm going to make sure I put it just on the tops, because I don't want them sticking to the tray, and if it slops down the sides. I'll just do those. Oops, that one's already gone on the tray. It's not a good start. There we go. And then I'll pop them in the oven, ready to. Uh, I think it's about between 12 and 15 minutes in the oven. And this is the first batch of my first attempt at saffron buns. They smell amazing. Um, I didn't have any raisins. To pop into the horns, you need to put them in um, is it the horns and the crosses, but you leave the bores alone. So, but I'm happy. I particularly like the um, the oxen, which um, I think have turned out looking rather good. You can see where I was a bit sparse in terms of the glaze on that one. Um, they're not bakery ready, but. This one looks really beautifully glazed, that's nice, like that. And here we are, last batch, or well, second batch, about to come out. A wee bit dark on the back perhaps, but not too bad. And I would call that an okay, an okay, you know, result. Um, let me think about what I would do differently. Well, there we are, that's all of them happily hanging out together. And what would I do differently? Well, the, the dough didn't colour up as well as it should have. Maybe I didn't have quite enough saffron. And on top of that, maybe the milk wasn't quite warm enough to completely dissolve the saffron and get the colour out of it. So those are two things that I'd be careful about next time. The other one was that when I proved it the second time after I'd made the shapes, I you know, I left it for the half an hour and they seemed okay, but what I didn't do was that sort of test. I, when you tap them with your finger, they have to spring back before they go in the oven. And that means that they've finished proving. And what else? Oh, I'd be a little bit more even with the glaze, because the glaze was not as even as it should be. Maybe I'd mix the egg yolk with a tiny bit of milk, just to make it a little bit um, less viscous. And apart from that, I'm quite happy with these, they're a bit wonky, their shapes are wonky, but hey, I don't mind about that. Oh, the other thing is that these, I wondered if these would, the crosses would cook as evenly as the rest of the buns, and I think they were okay, they're a little bit doughy in that part, I think, so what I'd do next time is that when I put them together, I'd thin those two parts down where they meet so that the cross part is slightly thinner when it goes in or put them all on another tray and just cook them as a separate batch so that they get a little bit longer in the oven. So there we are, day one, St Lucia's saffron buns in honour of my Swedish friends and yeah, maybe I'll do better next year. Well, they turned out fairly well I think for a first time. Oh man, I'm hot. Okay, it's you it shouldn't be baking on a day like today. The oven has just heated my apartment up and I'm about to go out so I'm not going to put the air conditioning on. And it's so nice, there's a bit of a breeze coming through and it's a perfect summer's day. Really, just not a perfect summer's day for baking. Remember, Deirdre, in summer you bake at night or shh, early in the morning. I'll do it next time at five o'clock in the morning when I'm awake and it's still quite cool. Definitely, it's a rule of thumb for Australia. You barbecue in summer, 
you eat outside in summer if you can avoid getting eaten by mosquitoes and on top of that you do any baking you have to do in the evening if it's at night when it's cooled off a bit and you can have fans on and aircon and everything else to try and keep the heat down a bit so i'm a bit pink but i'm happy with my saffron buns so if you enjoyed that i hope you give me a thumbs up please and don't forget to subscribe little red button down there and follow along come along for the journey of the night before christmas i hope that whatever you're doing you're having a lovely day and i will see you tomorrow. Bye!